All right, all right. So we are going to be talking about something that, first of all, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel because not only do I do these videos, but I also do lives and everything else every once in a while. You know, whenever I have that that one inspirational kind of mindset, you know, quote. I used to go live for about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, that's not happening because. I don't monetize this channel. I have my business and then I obviously have this as a side hustle. What I'm gonna be talking about today is probably gonna be one of the best tips I'm ever gonna tell you and it's literally just absolutely skyrocketed the internal uncomfortable feeling that I'm in stagnation, that I'm in stasis as Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon says. He says stasis is the worst thing that you can do in a business, in a company, in an organization, in a country, and obviously, and it starts with yourself. It starts with yourself. When you have stasis, that means you're not actually growing. That actually means that you're dying. In other words, and I don't mean in a physical sense, yes, obviously in a physical sense, but I mean in a mental, in whatever you're trying to grow, mental, wealth, your body, your relationships, whatever the case is, if your relationship is in stasis, don't come to me in five years and say, why is she asking for a divorce? Why is he actually breaking up with me? Well, because your relationship for five years was in stasis. It wasn't actually growing. Okay, in the beginning of a relationship, you obviously know you go through the honeymoon phase. Oh my God, this person is so sexy and I love it and there's so much passion. And then as, as you get used to them, you, you kind of just become best friends, as they say. You know, So this is where it comes down to. Everyone is, and, and I just wrote a post about this, everyone is stimulated all the time. And by stimulated, I mean social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, email, text message, any kind of notifications, gaming, TV, doesn't matter, all this content, Netflix, all this content is just is just bringing you and absorbing you and essentially just hacking your time, okay? That's not good. That's really bad, okay? So essentially, this first of all, we're gonna talk about it biologically, okay? Physiology is one of the biggest things that actually moves you forward. You feel good, you wanna take bolder and bolder and more and more action, okay? The thing is, when you have that uncomfortable feeling, and this is, I'm gonna use the S word, silence. When you have silence, you board a car, a cab. When you get into an elevator and you have that silence or, or they say you're at a doctor's you know, appointment and they say, yeah, you can just sit down. What's the first thing you do? Go for your phone? Do you need to go for your phone? If you actually have to do something on your phone, that's cool. If you actually have to answer emails or a text message, that's cool. I do that every once in a while. But once you rely on it, then this is what happens. You use that as a, as a mechanism for the uncomfortability that the feeling overwhelms you with when there is silence, when you have your mind or your thoughts going. When you can't actually, this is so deep, what I'm about to get into, is that if you can't actually hack into your thoughts in your brain, you're never actually gonna know if you're in stasis, if you're actually doing well or you're not doing well. In other words, this is where it came to came all through. There's Veritasium, I think is the, the YouTube channel where this first came up. I tried it. He has an eight minute video and he brings up all these studies. So this is the thing. Let's go back to what I was talking about is our ancestors lived out in the real world for millions of years, okay? This thing is 10 years old. 10 years old, 10 years old, that's it, 10. We lived millions of years. We evolved to take in a certain amount of input, whether that was stimuli, whether that was a fight, whether that was going out to get food, whether that was actually play or having sex, or whatever the case is, procreating is actually a better way to say it because it wasn't for pleasure, it was actually the procreation of species. Maybe at a time, yes, it became pleasurable, but it was more the procreation of the species. So this is the thing is that we had a certain amount of stimulus, which was imagine walking around without this, without all these things, I'm in New York City, without all these, these bings and buzzers and bright lights and everything, imagine just being out in the plains You'd be so present because that's all ancestral. That's all going out for a hunt, that's survival, that's going to battle, that's you know socializing, things like that. The problem was, problem is, I should say, is that when YouTube came along and all these movies and iPad and iPhone and everything else, it started hacking into our stimuli. So now our brain is overwhelmed. 
Our brain is overwhelmed with all the stuff that's coming into its brain or in, into the mechanisms that can process what's going on. When that happens, you feel more tired. You get lethargic because you're using all of the brain power to consume a video, to then think about it. You're using so much energy when that happens. And the problem is, this is what they've said, is that the amount of stimuli that comes into our brain, that's processed through our brain, is actually, in one week, is equivalent to what our ancestors did in an entire lifetime. And to be honest, I think it's even less now. Because they're saying the amount of content that's produced in a 24-hour period is the amount of content that was ever produced up until forever, up until about 2010 or something like that. So we're producing so much content. We're producing so much bad stories. We're fighting. There's this side versus that side. Then there's music coming in. You know, you're walking and you have music. At no time that has ever happened, okay? Good or bad, I'm not talking about that. This is what I'm talking about. If you're always consistently, when that happens of, say, there's a moment where you can be silent or be have no kind of stimulation or have nothing around and you don't go deep into that, you don't know if you're actually stagnating in life. In other words, this is what happened. I'm coming in, uh, it's a weekend, and in business, in my business, you know, I, I hit a period of stagnation earlier this summer, okay? And essentially, I, I came to work on, on one of the weekends, I saw this video, Veritasium, about silence and the power of silence and, and how good it is, and I'll talk to you about why. So essentially, saw this video, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try this. And I've already weaned off my phone a lot, in other words, no notifications. The only notifications is a text and a call. Uh, it's always on airplane mode. And if it's not on airplane mode, it's on do not disturb. And I know a lot of people are freaking out. What if a client does this? What if a client does that? What, leaves you? Because they didn't call, you didn't call them back in three hours or two hours? Okay, cool, freak out, that's fine. That, that's not for me, all right? That's not the way I'm gonna run my business. I'm gonna run the, the way I run my business and my life the way I want it. You're cool with it? Awesome, if not, no big deal, all right? No hard feelings, no harm fell, whatever. So this is the thing is I came in on a weekend and my business kind of stagnated. And I started thinking back to it, this is the, the key, no stimulation around. Music wasn't playing, I wasn't watching anything, I was just sitting in the chair that's down to my right and I was just sitting there and I was just like, and then I just got this overwhelming feeling. I can't, I can't even explain the feeling that just, it was like a cloak came over my body and it just felt, I like crunched up because my body, and I heard this from Travis Pastrana, the uh, X Games, or, or not X Games, but the extreme sport athlete. I follow him on, on Instagram and he, and he had this very, very poignant quote about four years ago. He said, people like, how do you actually go out and do backflips on a motorbike 100 feet in the air? Not 100 feet in the air, maybe 100 feet in the air, I don't know. 50 feet in the air, 40 feet, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's not the important part. But they said, how do you actually conquer the fear to do that? And he says, I actually have the opposite. If I don't do it, I feel weird. Instead of if I do it, I feel weird. So in other words, he's saying if he doesn't conquer his fear, he feels weird. And that really hit me. I said, holy shit, I've never heard of it. So he feels the fear and he does it anyway. Great book, by the way, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Dr. Susan Jeffers. But he takes the fear and he says, if I don't do this, I feel weird. And I started thinking about that. Then I saw this sit in silence and I, this overwhelming feeling said, holy shit, something needs to change. But the problem is people don't like that uncomfortable feeling. They don't like that silence. They don't like listening to their thoughts. So this is, this is what happens. You get into an elevator or you're at a doctor's appointment and they say, oh, can you sit down on the chair? The doctor will be with you whenever, whenever you have a minute, a minute by yourself. What do you do? Do you say, I'm, I'm getting really bored, really uncomfortable, go for my phone. Scroll through Instagram, scroll through Facebook, check my email, check my dating profile, whatever. And then the thing is, when you, when you do that, you immediately grab your attention, you immediately grab the uncomfortability, and then you get stimulated. Cool, that's great, fantastic. But the problem is, right on the other side of that is when your body says, I need to change. And then when you go into your thoughts, you say, actually, where I am right now, in your body, your mind, your wealth, your business, your relationships, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna change, your body will bring up, and then you say, and this is what happened to me. I was sitting down and I said, holy shit, 
something needs to give, and it's me. I need to change. And if I went on Instagram right before that feeling, I would have never had the hurt, the internal just ugh, angst to want to change because I would have went in and stimulated myself through some kind of video or some kind of, you know, just read something, maybe an audio book. But I said, you know what, sit in the silence, sit in the, and I wasn't even meditating. Just sit in this just uncomfortable feeling and then from there, this change of you gotta do something. You gotta do something. Sure enough, it was such, it was so deep, the uncomfortable feeling, I said, a change needs to happen in my lifestyle. A change of making sales calls needs to happen. An accountability partner needs to be in my life to change what I wanna do, which is expand my business. So I implore you guys to actually sit in that silence. And this is the biggest thing, is that if you can't hold yourself in the uncomfortable feeling of silence, you're never gonna be uncomfortable when it comes to stage fright, pitching your business, your services, yourself, whether it's a job interview, whether you're talking to a pretty girl, because if you can't sit in silence where there's nothing uncomfortable going on around you, where there's no actual public just spotlight on you, then you're never gonna be able to get where you want. If you can't actually sit there by yourself and be able to just think about your own thoughts and your own feelings, you're never gonna get where you want. That's a fact. Because it's shame and it's embarrassment when in the public space. If you mess up or stage, stage fright, or you go for the job interview, or you're pitching your services or your business, or you're making cold calls or, or the fear of rejection, whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter. If you can't actually go out into that uncomfortable feeling, I'm telling you right now, you, you will never become that actor, that musician, whatever the case is, the light just went out on my uh, whatever. Doesn't really matter, you know? This is a perfect example. Light went out, I still have these four lights. This was the most important thing. A quantum leap cannot happen if you can't sit by yourself in your thoughts and really say, where do I need to change? What do I need to change right now? Where in my life, where in my life am I just, am I just not rock solid? It will come. Your body already knows it. But the problem is we can't get there. We can't access it if we're con consistently on this thing. I literally have a, in my, I have a business plan. In my business plan for I think Q2 2020, which is in two years, maybe Q3, just not even carrying my phone. Always have an assistant. And I just, I wanna build my business enough where it just runs because I'm, I, I don't need this. I don't need it. And by the way, people are like, what do you mean you don't need it? This is the thing, is that we went quite far in life without it. It's only 10 years old. I think we can wean back on it, go back to our thoughts, go back onto the uncomfortable feeling of silence and the power that it comes from it. If this is your first video, leave your comments below. Uh, try this for the week. Try it for the weekend, whenever. Try it for today. Go into an elevator and just sit there in silence. All right, so hopefully this helps. Leave your comments below, subscribe to the video. Have an amazing day, and of course, as always, shoot me a, an Instagram message or a comment below on, on any kind of content you want me to bring up. Personally, these are things that as I say it, I have to live into, so it really helps me out, as well as it hopefully helps you out. In other words, I want less and less phone addiction, and or reliance, that's the better word. Less and less phone reliance. So, have an amazing day.